What's up, world? Starting the show a little early today. So, you know, if you hear, you hear. If you not, then catch it on YouTube in a bit. But, you know, we got a 10.30 game to start off the day today. So I'm just trying to be early with it, you know. So as soon as I put up the show ad, we'll get this thing started. All right, what's up, world? I hope everybody had a great weekend. And you know what time it is. It's time for the Primetime Angles on IG Live, hosted by the one and only Pop DBIC, the Primetime Capper. And boy, oh boy, today is Monday. And it is a brand new week. Yesterday wasn't really great for your boy. We did have a good day in the NBA. We had a good day in the, um, well, we had a good day in one of the MLB cards, you know, Five out of six, that's not too bad. But, you know, we got the over. That meaning over, meaning that we didn't win any games in the dog pick four. And um, pretty much today they said no dog pick four for you, Pop, because what's going on today is it's pretty much a traveling day. I think we only got about nine, ten games on the schedule. So I decided just to do a pick six today. And so that's what we're going to do here because the pick six is going to be very, very valuable. I've turned it into something that's really, really, really nice. Uh, so you guys will be on the lookout for that. We'll have that up there in a moment. But um, all in all, today we'll be talking about the state of the Lakers preview against the Jazz tonight. Then we'll be um, getting into the WNBA stats and things of that nature. And uh, then, you know, it's time to talk some bets. We got the NBA Super High Five. We got the Primetime Pick 6. And today I'm going to feature Philadelphia Parks uh, Racetrack. Uh, that's going to be the... Um, um, it, it's a morning track, but I'm going to give you guys r late r races that start in about the next two to three hours or so. So give you some time to uh, get up on that as well, too. So it is what it is. But y'all pile your butts on up in here. With my man, Marlon, Canada. Oh, Canada. All right. So before we get into the bets and everything like that, you guys go to my bookie. Dot com. You guys put in the promo code POP. You guys will receive up to $1,000 in a deposit bonus. But you do need to deposit and you do need to put the promo code in for it to be valid. So once again, that is promo code POP on mybookie.com. And you guys go ahead and put that in and receive up to $1,000 in a deposit bonus. And we'll go from there. This is for the people who are looking for a book. And there it is for you. There's the book right there. All right. So we move along and let's go ahead and talk about the Lake Show. And with the Lake Show, the Lakers, honestly, the Lakers, I'm telling you right now, nobody should get too offended about what happened last Friday. Um, not Friday, what happened on Saturday. Let me be let me let me be all the way accurate with that. But what happened Saturday was this. This a team in the it's a team in the Raptors that played the Lakers really well. They won their 11th game in a row. The Lakers actually gave up seven, had 17 turnovers in the game, shot 35%. But what I liked a lot, though, is that the Lakers won the battle when it came to block shots. The Lakers won the battle when it came to offensive rebounds, but they didn't win the overall rebound battle. And the Lakers did win the, the turnover battle as well, the uh, steals battle as well, too. What occurred was that the Lakers just couldn't score and they couldn't get anything from their top players ad had 14 points and he really only hit one field goal which was a three-pointer and other than that he had a lot of free throws he made and he made one little other bucket but ad has to do a bit more than 14 points and literally the lakers bench outscored the raptors uh bench 50 to they outscored their own starting five 50 to 42 so that's that's pretty pretty damn good with the um Lakers did um all bench wise but when it comes down to it though the they're going to have to do a little bit more cuz the Raptors seem to have their number a little bit and it's funny because LeBron had was so dominant against the Raptors with the Cavaliers and the Lakers are so dormant against them but it's just because the matchup just does not favor the Lakers they play a very uh, a very tight swarming defense on AD that winds up being something that is, you know, kind of a uh, hindrance to the Lakers. This is something that the Lakers do have to make adjustments on because other teams will see this and get all over this as well, too. Uh, so 
to me, they need to have players stepping up. Danny Green has been struggling. He's been really, really bad lately. He hasn't made any shots. Wide open threes, it's like you can leave them wide open. It's going to be a brick. So Danny Green's not the hot shooter that the Lakers signed him up to be. You know, um, I know that he's a specialist and everything like that, and sometimes your game does go a little off and, little, and things of that nature. That's why guys like Danny Green aren't all-stars and things like that. They're just very hard-working players. And when they struggle, everybody sees it, and it can be a hindrance to your team. So I don't know how much longer they're going to have Danny Green actually in the starting lineup or giving Danny Green those valuable minutes because I think that they're kind of taking too much away from Caruso and Waiters to waiting around on Danny Green to be good because those guys were doing what they had to do. And Kyle Kuzma is now fresh and ready to roll. So I'm really proud of what the bench is doing right now. So, you know, there it is with that. But we need LeBron to not overthink this thing. We need LeBron just to go out there and play. He played much better in game two, but he still had a lot of reckless moments as well, too. Another four turnover game. That's eight in total since we got back to the bubble. And that just means, you know, he's averaging four turnovers a game. He has to be better than that. So literally, AD LeBron, it's all on you guys tonight um, to make sure that you guys can get your team past the Jazz. I expect the bench to still be a factor tonight. And literally what they have to do is they have to really play some really good basketball tonight against a Jazz team that's kind of lowly. Um, Jazz should have lost their first game, but they figured out a way to win that against the Pelicans who just aren't ready for, for this type of situation yet. But I know what um, he's going to tell me. He's in the room now. My man, the Don of Cape Cod, I know what he's going to say. Jeff is going to say, but it's Zion. Zion, I'm sorry, 10, 15 to 20 minutes in the game, it doesn't matter. It, the Pelicans don't don't belong there. The Suns kind of showed that they belong there. The Kings don't belong there either. And the Wizards, come on, man. Wizards could have stayed home for all this, man. They, they're they looking absolutely awful. That They are barbecue chicken right now for a lot of these teams. So, um, all in all, that's the state of the Lakers for tonight. You guys already know what it is. I have my, I'll have the bet. It is it's a part of the super high five tonight as well too. So you guys be on the lookout for that. Let's move on and talk about the WNBA uh, betting stats that you guys need to look at this week and look at them very hard because um you know this league right here is a damn damn good betting league man. That's what I can tell you. Don't go away just because it's WNBA man because. It's only going to be a few minutes. So, as you guys can see, against the spread, the Mystic Sky, Lynx, and the Fever are all 3-1. and one. Then you have a Storm team that's 2-2. Two and two, That's tied with five other teams in the WNBA as well. And then you have the Sun, who are 1-3. and three. Surprise, surprise. They were seen as one of the better teams in the East. But they are 1-3 and three against the spread and 1-3 and three on the season as well, too. And the Liberty are 0-4. Oh no surprise there. They just have not been good at all to start the season. They're 0-4. Oh um as their record as well too so you know pretty much that team is gonna probably be a team that is gonna beat us when we don't expect it but i would say you know what when this team jumps in against some of the bottom teams of the league that's when you really look out for it or they could cause a big upset against one of the top teams but they haven't been in any games they've been blown out by double digits in each game they played in it's kind of a sad sight to see what the squad and, um, you know, they could, they got to do better. They could be better. You know, well, actually, I think they lost by single digits, like nine to the dream. But still, they're just playing bad basketball. And it is what it is at the end of the day. And then the top five bet stats that I have here, um, we got the Mercury, who have went over in three out of their last four games. The Liberties have went over in three out of their last four games. And guess what? What game they didn't go over in? The game when they played each other yesterday. That's that's some shit, ain't it? It's just, wow. Wow. All right, so there it is. We got the Lynx as an underdog straight up. They are 3-0. and So when you see the Lynx as an underdog, you might want to jump on that. Well, actually, I'm sorry. It's the Sky because um, I got all these words and everything like that. I can't look right at the um, bottom of the notes. But I'm sorry. The Sky are 3-0 and with the underdog um, straight up. And the Lynx are 3-1 and one as the underdog straight up. And then the Sun are 0-3 as the favorite straight up. So there it is with the uh, bet stats that you guys need to look at for this week. And this is a trend that you could follow 
or it's a trend that you could buck and say, you know what, I'm going to go in reverse. Because let me give you a great example. I played over with the um, with the Mercury and the Liberty yesterday. In most occasions, I don't do that. But I did it yesterday because, I don't know, I couldn't just trust the Liberty. And then even in the back of my head, I thought, well, they are removing about 20% of their scoring with Sabrina being hurt. So... But still, they'll figure out a way to give up 100 points and probably score 80 on their own. Well, they gave up 96, and they only scored, I think, 79 on their on, on their end or 69. I don't know. They got blew away, but it is what it is. We move, in, we move along. All right, so here we are. There it is, NBA Super High Five. I know you guys been going, been antsy about it. That's why I made sure I did the show early for you guys today. We got the Heat. The Heat are, I like these guys. I know that they're going to be playing the Raptors today. The Raptors look really good against the Lakers. But I would say this. I would say that when it comes down to actual lineups and actual teams, I would say Denver has a better team than the Lakers overall. I hate to say that, and I'm a Laker fan. But you look at Denver's team and look at the young talent that they have. Only thing that's holding them up is coaching. That's it. And they got balls, too. This is a team that's willing to throw a 6'7 point guard, a 6'8 two guard, a 6'11 small forward, a 6'11 power forward, and a 7'2 center. Yeah, they did that in their uh, opening game just to say we're going to rock with no positions here. So that, to me, probably was something that they had to get used to and get comfortable with. And Miami just beat them off of pure hustle in that game. And Miami is a damn good team and they played they, they played really good basketball and they're some of the they're one of the sharpest shooting teams in this bubble right now as well too. And Jimmy Butler is a top is a top all NBA player in my opinion. He should be the shooting guard for the first team all NBA this year for the things that he has done for the uh Heat this season. Now the Raptors they are tough. Now the Raptors are getting the respect of everybody. The people were starting to realize, yes, this is a Raptors team that won a world championship. Yes, Kawhi wasn't there, but Kawhi was the missing piece to a team that was already pretty good. So Siakam has stepped up his game and has became the Kawhi, but you got OG um, stepping up his game as well, too, who wasn't a starter last year. Then you still got Fred Van Fleet, who's very, very good. And then Kyle Larry's just pushing it, pushing the show and doing what he got to do. And then you still got Marcus All out there for just to know that you got Marcus All out there. So, you know, the Raptors, you know, they're going to be tough. But I think in this format and in this game, it's early. I think Miami goes ahead and they get us a nice little upset today. I'm going to take the plus 150. That's not a big upset. But it it would be a good win for Miami. And I think Miami does get the win here. So I'm taking them with the plus 150. And then we got the Pacers and the Wizards. And I'm going to tell you like this. The Wizards are absolutely awful. There's no point of them being here in my opinion. There's really no point of them being here at all. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to definitely take the minus 8 on the Pacers. I don't even like to take big spreads like that in NBA games. But you know what, though? I think the Pacers, after T.J. Warren drops 53 Saturday night against the um, 76ers, they have themselves a game against the Sixers. I think that they're going to take that confidence and that momentum since nobody's paying attention to the Pacers. And I think that they're going to annihilate uh, the Wizards today. The Wizards just seem like a team that just kind of happy to be there, kind of just going with the flow, kind of just taking in Disney World a little bit. So I think the Pacers, who know that they're playing for a seating, uh, for seating right now, for real seating right now, they should go ahead and win this game today, win it by 10 or better. And that's why I'm taking the Pacers with the minus eight. And then we got the Nuggets and the Thunder. Now, the Thunder might be the best kept secret in the um, in the whole bubble. But you know what? I think that the Jazz just were a tired team when they played them. They had an exhausting game against the Pelicans the night before. And so they come back. You got to go against a fresh uh, CP3 in the Thunder. They kind of know all the weaknesses of the Jazz. They took advantage of it, blew them away, blew them off the court very early. And it is what it is. So... I think that what you got to do here is, um, oh, I was talking about the, I'm talking about the Jazz, but oh yeah, the Jazz game, but the Nuggets 
as I said before, they just got overwhelmed by the Heat. The Heat went on a good run, and they had a lot of one and duns and things of that nature. I know they want to bounce back from that, and they want to prove a point, and I think that their size is going to be the difference in this game today. They may not win the game, but they will keep the game close. I think that they lose by five or less. Really, this game is going to come down to a final bucket, in my opinion, to be honest with you. But plus six on the Nuggets. Let's see how it shakes out. And then we got the Spurs and the 76ers. And let me give you a note. The Spurs have won twice already as a dog. And it, they were a dog that was better than plus 150, plus 160. So this is going to be a good matchup to me tonight. The 76ers want to get their first win in the bubble. The Spurs need to keep winning because if they keep winning, they'll be the A seed. And they already got that good win over the Grizzlies to start everything off as is anyway. And then they got a good win over um, a team that I think was ahead of them as well, too, in Sacramento. So there it is. Have a good day, Marlon. Um, so there it is. It is going to be a very, very, very good game today. It's probably one of the best games of the day in the bubble. And that's going to be the Spurs and the 76ers. Pop feels rejuvenated. You got some rejuvenated DeMar DeRozan. And, um, you know, I think that what happens here is that we're going to have ourselves in over 227. I think it's very possible because both of the uh, Spurs games have went over, and the Spurs were a team that had a lot of games go over during the season, especially against the Eastern Conference. So let's see how it goes. Over 227, Spurs 76ers. And then last but not least, I just talked about the Dod the Lakers and the uh, state of the Lakers not too long ago. I'll be real quick here. I, both these teams, both their first games went well under. Tonight, that doesn't happen. What happens here is that we get the over 217 in this spot. Lakers Jazz are going to be going at it. They're going to be scoring on each other left and right. And both these teams know that it's gut check time. They're both one and one. And the Lakers are trying to keep that top seed. But the Jazz are trying to keep themselves in the top four as well, too. So this one's going to be a really good game. And you know everybody wants to measure themselves against LeBron and AD. So here we are, over 217, Lakers Jazz. I think that should be the um, the bet for that game, period, point blank. And you know I don't like throwing my Lakers on the uh, super high five and everything like that. But it is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and rock with um, the Lakers tonight because I like, I, like this, I like the other value on the team that's not on the teams that are not on the super high five. So you'll be able to get that access if you are a client and you know i got all day as well today too so if you guys do want to sign up you guys can dm me here or on the twitter at pop and you guys can be be a part of the primetime sports investors and i do have the end of the 2020 uh deal end of the year deal for you guys as well too meaning that you guys will uh, discount a price from my usual uh 20 all of 2020 uh package you guys will get yourself um, you know, a discount from that because that's, a, you know, it's stupid to see, keep charging full price if we only got about four months left to go in a year. So it is what it is. You guys go ahead and hit me up uh, either on here on the um, DM or you guys can hit me on the Twitter. All right. So we move on and let's go ahead and talk about some uh, baseball and in baseball, baseball. All right. So baseball, we got it like this. And I messed up. Uh, baseball is we're going to do baseball like this tonight we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the Royals with the plus one and a half Royals got themselves a, a good one at at uh, Wrigley against the Cubbies so we're going to see how that one goes but hopefully we'll be able to put ourselves in a position that will put us in a good spot to go ahead and um, you know pretty much um, get that uh, money man Plus one and a half, Royals just keep it close for us, man. That's all we ask for. But the Royals could possibly get the good upset as well, too. So let's see how it goes. Plus one and a half on the Royals. And it seems like the American League is having their way in these National League, American League matchups as well, too. Quiet is kept. I know the Dodgers have their way with the Astros, but everybody else seems to be having some struggles. To be dead honest with you, the uh, NL West has done well, but everybody else hasn't. You know, in the NL. So, we'll see how it goes. And then we got the Mets. We're going to go with a DeGrom. We, we got Jacob DeGrom on the mound. And, you know, I faded Jacob last week when he had a big, big line on him. But 
This week, they give me plus 130 for him to win by two or more runs. I think this is very possible. I think if I was one of his hitters, one of his teammates, I got to make up for that BS that happened last week when we didn't get him any type of runs when he was uh, pitching. We got to get this man three or four or five runs a day so he can take care of us and we can win this game. So I think the Mets go ahead and reward him with that. Give me that minus one and a half on the Mets. And then we got the Phillies. Money line Phillies plus 250. Boy, oh boy, you already know what time it is. That's the dog of the day, and that's why it's okay not to have the actual, you know, uh, dog pick for because it's only 10, it's only like nine, 10 games. We don't know who's gonna have a game postponed, so I'm just going with the best six I feel like. And you guys see that big number right there, too. That's better than a lot of fellas. So, Phillies, dog of the day. If you want to single it, plus 250. You got to be bold in this game to stick in this game. That's all I got to say. And then we got the Brewers minus 110. Their return, you know, the Brewers didn't have any cases. They just had to take the weekend off because the Cardinals did. So the Brewers are fresh, fresh minded. And all it seems like being fresh helped the Baltimore Orioles as well, too. They've actually went ahead and what they want. They swept out the uh, Rays last weekend. So, hey. It might be a, a, a very uh, suitable situation for some of these teams. And I think that uh, the Brewers fall into that category. So give me the Brewers, minus 110. Let's see how it shakes out. Then we got the over nine with the Pirates and the Twins. I think today the Twins uh, the Twins got such a good offense, man, that I think that they'll be able to, to get six or seven runs today. And I think that the Pirates will wind up scoring some runs today as well, too. And we'll get the over nine. I feel like we'll get the over nine pretty easy. But don't talk like that, Pop. We got to make sure that we get the over nine first. So let's go ahead and see what we see how it shakes out. And we'll go from there. Over nine, Pirates, Twins. And then we move on and we have the under 13 Giants, Rockies. I know, I know, I know. Giants just don't score a lot of runs, man, and it's that simple. And the Rockies, you know, they score a lot of runs as well, too. But I think that pitching is going to be at a premium tonight. You got Johnny Cueto on the mound, and I I know he's not going to go out there and just give up seven runs in the first inning. It's going to take some time. I think that we're going to have some pitching going on. I'm not saying that there's not going to be any scoring, but what happens is, is it falls short of the 13. Now, that's what we're doing here. And once again, this is the primetime pick six. It's 91 to 1. So let me go ahead and give you these odds. If you put $10 on it, it's 910 bucks for the winner. You put $20 on it, it's 18, it's actually 1820 on the winner. Alright? So you guys have to understand this is some money right here. Damn, even if you put two dollars on it, you get back 180. So you know, small risk, big reward. I would say don't put that little of a bet on it, man. At least, you know, minimum five. You know what I mean? Shit, seriously. Uh, but this is a 91-1. And then, as always, single what you like the most on here or single them all and um, see where you go from there because there will be winners on the list. I can't guarantee that the uh, reward will be there, but there will be winners on the list. There's There always is. So, you guys, just keep on the lookout and... Just keep riding that wave, man. So we move on. Let me go ahead and get us uh, over to here. And I'm going to talk about horse racing. Now, uh, pretty much I was I didn't send the notes over to the iPad. So I won't have that up on the screen. So I'm just going to put back on the um, show sign. Um, so pardon me. It's not, I might not be looking right at the screen when I'm talking to you guys. But here we are. We got the maiden spe- we got we start off today with a maiden special weight. Baby of the day. That baby of the day is gonna be in race five. It's gonna be a horse uh number five named Money Kid. Money Kid is um Money Kid is a pretty good horse. He's gonna he's his first time uh riding. Frankie Pennington is gonna be riding a horse. And the trainer of the horse is going to be a guy by the name of Scott Lake. This is this horse's first time on the track. We're going to see what it do because it's a lot of these horses' first time on the track. And then we're going to pair this horse with the um, one horse. That horse being uh, one one and one A actually. So it is a double uh, entrant. So that means that e- either or 
if either or wins, then, you know, we look pretty good in our exact trifecta superfecta. Then I'm going to throw in the seven and the nine. And yeah, I'm kind of throwing out a horse right now that has the experience, but the rest of these horses haven't ran yet. So I don't feel like this horse will be able to keep up with the with this group because all of them are fresh and and real green, and this horse did not look good in their last showing as well, too. Even though the horse did finish third, it was a sloppy third. It was a blowout third. So you don't know what to expect with this horse. But it is a maiden special weight of $40,000 today. So they ain't playing. These are some high-end horses right here uh, that can move on and do some big things after this. But they are all babies as well, too. So we'll see how it goes. I like the five. I think that that's going to be our value today. That's going to be our shot today. Let's see how it goes. But we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to put the one, five, seven, and nine all together. And that will be our group for the um, race five over at Parks. So remember, Parks is over in Philadelphia. And that's the track that you guys will want to um, go ahead and bet on, okay? And that's race number five right there. Then we move on. My best value uh, today is, is going to be a horse by the name of Spartek. That's going to be number nine in that race. And we're going to pair that horse with our top horses, meaning the one, the three, and the four. You guys can box that up um, as one, three, four, nine. Or you guys can go ahead and do a key where you guys put key in the nine with the one, three, four. So we'll see how it goes with that one. But this is going to be a good, good bet, man. So... There it is, there it is, there it is. And then we have the race number 10, Nightcap, uh, claiming 18K is going to be this. It's going to be the, um, it's going to be a really good uh, race uh, at the end of the night. And um, I like this one a lot. This one is going to be a um, pretty good race. And Geo, I'll let you, I, I'll get, I'm about to wrap the show up in a moment, man. Next show, I'll get you in here. All right, so here we are. Number 10, race 10. We got 12 runners, no scratches as of yet. Uh, well, we do have one scratch. I'm going to go ahead with the horse, number three, Danzing Partner. My Danzing Partner is another Scott Lake horse. Horse finished fourth last time out in, on, in July. I think that this will be something that we can work out ourselves and uh, go from there, man. And then pretty much Cadence Courage is going to be another good one for us today as well, too. Um, that's going to be the uh, horse that's going to be the first pick here for it. And then we also have the uh, four horse here, which is Rules. So we're going to go two, three, four here. And then we're also going to go ahead and throw in the nine horse as well, too. So our key horse here is going to be the three. And then we're going to pair that horse up with the two, the four, and the nine, okay? And that's going to be either you box him, two, three, four, nine, or you guys go ahead and key it, three, two, four, nine, okay? So there it is with our bets for Parks today. And man, oh man, it has been a good, good show. I'm going to go ahead and get my day started as well, too. I started very early, so then I can make sure I get everything together and I'm not rushing things as well, too. We got about a third. We were supposed to start about three minutes ago. I started actually at about 9.05. So you guys just catch us on the YouTube. Make sure if you're watching this show, when you guys do see it on YouTube, see it anywhere. Please share this show so that others can see this as well, too. This is good money right here. Don't be selfish now, all right? Everybody, everybody gets to eat with pop, okay? So it is what it is at the end of the day. This show is brought to you by Prime Wave Media Group. And uh, man, it is the premier sports betting show hosted by the one and only Pop DiBiase, the primetime Kappa. And I'll be right back at you tomorrow. Um... Maybe not the same time, but I'll be back at you definitely tomorrow. For sure, for sure. For you. So make sure you guys tune in and make sure you guys let them know where the wave is and where the money is. It's right here on the Premier Sports Bet Show. And I am gone.